Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm going to talk to you about a list of possible favourite authors that I have out there. Now, I'm always very reluctant to claim that people are my favourite author if I haven't read a decent amount of their back catalogue. Um, so I have a certain number of kind of relatively strict rules for what I would consider to be a favourite author. Obviously there are going to be videos out there where I don't stick to this immediately, um, but for me generally for someone to be considered a favourite author rather than just the writer of some of my favourite books, I need to have read at least three of their books and really consistently enjoyed all three of them. So today I've got a list of authors where I have read two books from them and really enjoyed them and basically they just have one more that I need to read for them to uh, officially qualify to be considered a favourite author. So this is why I'm calling this the nearly favourite authors or possible favourite authors or future favourite authors list. Who knows what I will decide as the actual title to this. So I'm going to jump straight in and talk about these authors. The first one on that list is actually the only guy on the entire list and that is Andy Ware. So I have read The Martian and Artemis, which are, as far as I'm aware, the only two books he has out. So I have enjoyed everything from Andy Ware's back catalogue. Andy Ware tends to write sci-fi, but he writes kind of slightly closer to home sci-fi. So his big break was The Martian, which was about a guy who ended up on um, being abandoned and stranded on Mars, and it was about his story of trying to come back. And Artemis is about when we have colonised the moon, and it's about the um, kind of almost like a, a crime thriller taking place on the settlement on the moon. The things I really enjoy about Andy Ware's writing is he involves a lot of science in them and they give off the impression of being very well researched and they kind of tally up with what I know about science in general so I believe that a lot of what he writes about is very scientifically accurate. Obviously I've not actually gone out and like verified that but from what I've understood he is very good at doing that kind of thing and there's a real emphasis on like the characters using science and scientific knowledge to get out of problems and like to solve issues and that kind of thing. Um, I just generally think as well his characters are really funny. His brand of humour is something that isn't going to appeal to everybody but I absolutely adored The Martian and I found Artemis like equally as amusing. Um, in some ways Artemis is a slightly better storyline I think because there's just more going on whereas The Martian definitely is leaning far more heavily on like humour and science but I think both of them are great. When Andy Ware comes out with another book I will totally read it and if I like it he officially becomes a favourite author. The next one actually technically speaking I have read three books from this author but an, an additional caveat I forgot to mention is they can't be from the same series because for me if I read book one of a series and really enjoy it there is a really 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 high chance I'm going to like the rest of them but that doesn't necessarily ring true for other books outside of that series and what I'm looking for when I say that an author is a favourite author is consistency of my response to them across their back catalogue. So for that reason uh, I can't actually count Minette Walters as a favourite author yet but I nearly can. So like I said I've read three books by her, I've read the two that are in the Black Death duology of which this is book one and I also read quite a long time ago now Acid Row by her. Minette Walters does a lot of stuff to do with characters, um, it's interesting the two kind of styles of book that I've read from her are quite different. Acid Row is um, but quite different but quite similar in weird ways. Um, Acid Row is a contemporary that is set on a kind of cul-de-sac area and is about a girl who goes missing and um, like a, a witch hunt that basically starts to form for um, a guy who is on a sex offenders list but is nothing to do with young girls um, and it's about kind of the way that mob mentality can take over and it's this sort of lock-in that happens and how the characters deal with that. In a similarish way Manette Walters Black Death duology is a historical fiction set at the time of the Black Death um, and it is about a closed isolated situation for um, the people who live in this particular um, village or like on this lord's land and it's about them all coming in and trying to support each other within this time and again there are like enemies within there's that mob mentality idea so she's really good at doing very slow paced very character driven real like tense situation I almost want to say thriller but not quite kind of style books. She is a huge back catalogue that I definitely need to read more of and I'm so sure that I'm going to end up loving her like all of her back catalogue and all of her previous work but for now she's officially classed as a maybe favourite author because I've not actually read enough yet. The next one I have is Laura Purcell 
Now I've read The Corset and The Silent Companions and at time of filming I don't think I've given you my thoughts on Silent Companions yet. Um, Laura Purcell really specialises in the gothic historical thriller um, very much set in the Victorian era. She has three books out, her newest one Bone China I've not got to yet and I'm super excited to. Um, I read The Corset first and absolutely loved it. This one is about following two main characters. Ruth is um, a self-confessed murderess who is trying to tell her story to uh, Dorothea who is a, a lady of a much higher class who is basically using her status to do charity work within the prison and it's about their two different stories. In a similar Silent Companions is about a young woman who is in an insane asylum and she's being accused potentially of murder, potentially not, and it's about her telling her story to her psychiatrist um, to reveal what happened. Both of them involve some sort of slightly supernatural element that you're not too sure how real or not it is. There's some kind of sort of ghostly ideas or potential magical abilities. Um, there's often this woman who is down on her luck and then getting vengeance in some kind of way. It's really, really creepy and gothic and powerful. Powerful, very much got like women in black vibes a lot of the the very gothic horror novels that sort of harking back to and I really really love her writing style I enjoyed I think I enjoyed the plot of The Silent Companion slightly more but I enjoyed the writing in the corset slightly more if that makes sense I think you can see the evolution of Laura Purcell as an author through the two books which means I'm even more excited about Bone China because I want to see what she can kind of progress to next. I don't know the plot of Bone China but I don't need to know it I'm definitely going to pick it up and really enjoy it I'm so sure. Now I have one where I have like a from this author an all time favourite book and then a book that I just enjoyed but I think I'm continuing to count this and it's not the author's fault that the first one was uh, such a hit for me and that's Natasha Mostert. So I've got Seasons of the Witch here which is my all, one of my all time favourite books and I also read Wind Walker last year. Um, Natasha Mostert specialises in creepy gothic vibes but set in a contemporary setting rather than a historical setting and she often dabbles with things that have some kind of element of magic potentially in them. Um, this one is actually a thriller where the detective kind of character in this is investigating two sisters who he reckons have murdered someone and he's trying to discover more about them um, but in doing so he kind of infiltrates their inside um, and learns more about them. There's something to do with witches as the title suggests, there's also something to do with like psychic kicks. Um, it's very very cool and very interesting. Windwalker was playing more along ideas of like fate and um, soulmates and being kind of separated across time and space. Um, I don't think it was quite as good or quite as strong as Seasons of the Witch but that might just be because of how many times I've reread this. You know your brain like fails to be objective about a book anymore because you're now just laying on the rose tint to those glasses every single time that you read it but generally I really enjoy her writing I think it's so atmospheric and she does description so well and again she's got a decent back catalogue so at some point I'm going to pick up another one and see if she officially counts or not because I had a bit of a lukewarm reaction to Windwalker compared to this I'm not overly psyched to get to another one of hers I think there's higher priority authors on this list but I definitely will pick up another one at some point it's just a case of when and which one okay one that I read both of them a while ago but I am pretty sure will still technically count is Robin McKinley now Robin McKinley writes a lot of, of fairy tale and like um, supernatural retellings and kind of reworking very classic either fairy tales or supernatural tropes I technically have read three of her books but I can't remember one of them, so I don't think it counts yet. Uh, this is Spindle's End, which is a retelling of the classic Sleeping Beauty myth. I have also technically read her Beauty and the Beast retelling, but that's one I can't remember. And I've also got Sunshine on my shelf, which is her take on vampires. I think she does such wonderful stuff with classic tropes and really twists them into fun and interesting ways. And the way that she twists them often has some kind of sort of feminist undertone to them, especially Spindle's End, which really at, at its heart is about women saving other women. And it's such a powerful book. I think her back catalogue of characters and like um, the way that she develops all of the secondary and tertiary characters in her story is really 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 strong. In terms of her plots I think that they are slightly weaker. She's definitely better when dealing within like a retelling that has a much stricter plot like for example a fairy tale whereas I think her vampire book Sunshine is weaker on that because there's less that she can like lean on as a framework and a narrative for her um, but I definitely need to read more. I know she's a super prolific fantasy writer although she was writing in the like early 2000s I don't know if she's doing anything at the moment and again it's the kind of thing where I either need to reread Beauty 
I'm pretty sure I had a good response to it but like I'm saying I read it when I was a teenager and I don't feel confident saying that she's a favourite author until I've read one of her things more more recently and like actually could remember it because I genuinely can't tell you anything about that book but I'm sure I read it um so yeah it's one that I'm pretty convinced is a favourite author though now for me favourite author does not necessarily mean that they are writing my favourite books. What it means is I know exactly what I'm walking into when I pick up one of the books and when I am in that right frame of mind that is 110% what I wanted at that moment in time and they deliver to a T if that makes sense. Like a lot of these books on this list are not necessarily going to be making it to my kind of absolute all time favourites but they are ones that when I really want that this is the person that I go to and for me I think a real like the epitome of that on this list is Christina Henry. This is another fairy tale retelling but very much leaning on the YA. I've read Lost Boys and uh, The Mermaid and I really enjoyed both of them but there is no way I'm ever gonna list them as one of my favourites. They are like a such a strong comfort read for me in the sense of like it's YA I know what she's going to be doing the character I like it's going to hit all the all the beats and all the plot points that I need it to hit it's going to be a very um standard comforting read but it's not one that is going to like blow me away and I think Christine Henry does this so well there's such interesting twists on the fairy tales but when it really comes down to kind of the writing it is that slightly more simplistic like slightly more tropey take to them that means that I don't think it's doing anything particularly revolutionary. Um, don't get me wrong, I really like her stuff otherwise she wouldn't be on this list. Of the two of them I think, see I was about to say which one I think I like more but genuinely I think both of them were very good for very different reasons. Lost Boy is like a, a retelling of Peter Pan and it's a take on almost like Lord of the Flies meets Peter Pan which was really fun looking at the idea of these the young boys that Peter Pan steals and um their life on the island and kind of the dangers that come with it and the the childlike understanding of those dangers. The Mermaid is a retelling of The Little Mermaid and it involves P.T. Barnum and the circus life and her coming and becoming like a, a, a part of his freak exhibition and that was really interesting look at sort of humans and how they deal with freaky things and um being owned and that kind of thing. Um, both of them were really good fun. I know Christina Henry has just started a series to do with Alice in Wonderland that is being um, very highly spoken of, rave reviews in the YA section of booktube, so that might be one that I go to next, but she does have some interesting things in her back catalogue that I would be tempted to pick up too. And like I say, when I'm in the mood for this style of a book, she is 100% the one I'm going to be going to because she hits those points perfectly but it's not something I'm often in the mood for. And the final one for this list is Kate Atkinson um, and I have read two of hers, again like all of them on this list, I've read Life After Life and Transcription. Uh, Life After Life, in fact both of them technically are historical set in roughly around the time of the Second World War. Transcription more um, heavily leans into this idea of it being written in the Second World War, it's more more directly linked to that and the war itself um, where our main character is a secretary who transcribes notes from um, spies and sitting in in various um, sort of spy rings and things like that so that was very very interesting was kind of playing around with ideas of like what you can and can't do for your country and sort of betrayal and things like that it was very very good fun very interesting life after life is doing something a bit weirder and it's playing around with like a multiverse idea where our main character every time she dies she like um, her brain kind of rewinds itself back to the point just before that that kind of turning point happened and she gets a do-over but she doesn't remember any of these she just has like a weird sense of deja vu that she shouldn't go and do that kind of thing um, and then through that it explores a lot of different kind of timelines going through the second world war so similar-ish in style but obviously they're doing quite different things and the reason why I think Kate Atkinson is almost the most risky on this list is because when looking at her back catalogue and the other books she has I think she's one who is um, a lot more varied in the kind of writing that she does which means that she's going to be less consistent and a bit more risky as a read. Um, her other major kind of book series is um, I think it's called the Brody series and it's definitely like a, a literary thriller kind of a vibe. She also has another follow-on technically to this which is following Teddy who is the younger brother of our main character but I'm assuming that has none of the like multiverse elements that I really enjoyed in this book so again I don't really know what she's doing there. At some point I am going to read another one of hers because like I said I really enjoy both of them and I think for me 
the real appeal of Kate Atkinson is the level of technique and craft she brings to her writing. They are very well written, well structured, tight novels that you can tell have had a lot of work put into them. And I think that that would carry across regardless of the genre but it is going to be a slightly different take depending on which one of them I go for next. And it could be that even if I like her writing, I don't like whatever she's doing in the next pot one. The thriller ones especially kind of put me off a little bit, I'm not too sure. So that is a list of a bunch of authors that at some point I think will probably officially classify as favourite authors, but god knows when that'll be. What do you think to this as an idea? Do you have like limitations on what you consider to be um, allowed to be classed as a favourite author? Or for you is it just one book of theirs and then you're happy? This is probably going to be the start of a little bit of a mini series discussing authors and authors back catalogues and favourite authors on my shelf so um, if you do like this let me know down below because I think I've got a few other things related to this as a discussion coming up in kind of the next week or two. Also if you know any of the uh, authors work from this list and you think that where, where there is more than one option of what I could go to next do give me some recommendations of what you think I'd enjoy especially people like Christina Henry and Manette Walters have got huge back catalogues where I really don't know where to go next for them to try and get that third one to tick off that box so do let me know your thoughts on that too i hope you're all staying safe have a wonderful reading week and i'll chat to you soon bye